started wondering how sharp this knife was from factory because it'll barely cut paper. And it's bad. So I figured I'd throw it on the edge on up edge tester just to give it a shot and see. So let's see. I'm just going to test this in random spots, mainly in the middle. That's 380, 345, 366. So doing the average on this, came out to 364. I don't do very many factory edges, so I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> you guys tell me. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and put an edge on this and get it nice. Tonight we're gonna put an edge on this ancient Barlow. And I'm gonna use my Shapton glass stones for this. I'm going to start at 500 and take it all the way to 8,000. And I've got the knife taped up pretty well. I'm not going to try to go with a crazy low angle here. There will be a little reprofiling just because the angle is so obtuse right now. But I'm not going to I'm not going to go to the point where I'm going to have to hopefully enhance this sharpening notch. Once I get started though, if it looks like that's gonna be a be the case, what I'll probably do is take a diamond file shaped like a triangle, just get in there and widen that out just a little bit. So first first off I'm gonna find out where the angle actually is. And that looks like where it's at currently. drop it just a little bit yeah that shouldn't be too bad now I do have the blade taped up as well as the bolster and along the bottom because I don't want to cause any unnecessary damage N95 is some really easy steel to sharpen, but it can get away from you really quickly. What I mean by that is you can start grinding and grind too much really quickly because of how soft it is. So if you're going to attempt something like this, go very slow and check often. So right now, just getting started, I've got the shining portion along the edge. That is the existing bevel back here. Got just a little bit in the rear. And a little bit at the tip there. pressure. I'm not even using the weight of my hand. I'm going very, very light. Like I said, 1095 will get away from you quick.
and I may have to enhance this sharpener notch just a little bit. I haven't created a burr yet. Well, actually I do have a little burr in the belly. This main grind is getting a little wavy. that straight jumped out of my hand. I still got that little bit right in the rear that's just not cooperating. Just about got it. I got this side pretty much done just checking to make sure everything is even and it appears so so we're going to switch over to the other side I'm going to find out where the angle actually is currently and then drop accordingly So that's where we are.
Well, I'm grinding it at the same angle. The bevel is actually going to be smaller on this side than this side. So I've got a choice. Either I can grind it asymmetrically or just keep the same angle. So I'm just going to try to make it look as good as I can but keep the same angle. Traditionals are so thin they can be notorious for having off-center grinds. You guys saw my traditional video. I had this problem with my Viper and it was really bad on that one. Got just a little nibbin right at the very tippity tip. And that looks like I got it. We are pretty much done getting this thing reprofiled basically. So we're going from the 500 grit to the 1K. To get down in this base, what I'm having to do is angle the knife kind of like a U in this fashion right here. And then as I draw through, I'm putting my pressure like this. So I'm doing a, a U kind of shape. That's allowing me to get all the way at the very base where that plunge is, where that sharpening notch is, all the way to the tip. And you can see on my stone, I'm grinding right along the base. 
right in here, start to transition to the middle, and then we start hitting up in the belly and tip. And this bevel is tiny. It's one of the nice things about traditionals is they are ground nice and thin. So this won't take very long at all. And it should be extraordinarily sharp when we're done. Like I said, if you're doing this on your own, best advice I can give you is to stop and look, stop and look. Always check your work. And I'm pretty much done with that side. kind of machinery that running outside but it is making some awful noise I don't know if that's picking up on video Filling for a burr. Got a little bit of one starting to develop. Again, I'm doing that U pattern so I can get all the way back here at the sharpening choil. And I'm pretty much finished on this side. I've got a little bit, a little bit more work to do in the belly just to get rid of the scratches. So from 1,000 to 4,000. All the hard work is pretty much done. This is just going to be polishing the bevels now. I personally have found 1095 to be very similar to 420. A polished edge on it just seems to slip on a lot of material. Other people say it's just me, but as I've found cutting 
especially hard stuff like plastic, I found the knife skips almost. Like there's no gritty aggression. So personally, when I get a 1095 knife now, I don't take it to a polished edge. I stop around 1000 grit, maybe 4000, and I leave it there. I'm not saying a highly polished edge isn't sharp. I love a polished edge, but for whatever reason, on 1095, 420, it just doesn't agree with me. Trying to make sure that tip is getting getting some loving. I think we're pretty much done here. And the final stone, 8,000 grit. My method hasn't changed. I'm still doing that U shape pattern, starting with the knife a little elevated off the stone. The tip's not actually touching. I'm going through the stroke like that. Again, on the stone, you can kind of see from the wear pattern. Starting right here, I'm hitting the choil. As I come through right here, I start hitting the belly. And as my pressure changes, I hit the tip and then back up. Really starting to take a shine now.
I'm rotating the stone for each side. That way I get even wear on my stones. But also as you build up metal swarf on the stone, as you continue to sharpen on it, not only does it slow down the cutting speed, it actually starts to burnish the edge a little bit and you start getting a higher polish. I need the stone to actually cut through the scratches from the previous stone before it does that. So getting a fresh surface like this helps me do that. Getting the stone cleaned up, I'm pretty much just going to be doing some finishing passes now. Kind of right in the shoulder there because I got some scratches up there that I didn't quite get to, especially in the base. That's pretty much it. The edge is all done from the stones. This is 2 micron CBN. Much better. where we are. I'm 
bevel thickens up just a little bit in the belly. Nothing too bad. That bevel is tiny. I got you guys kind of twisted at an angle, or rather, I've got the test twisted at an angle so that the display doesn't have such a glare on it. Like the first set of numbers, I'm just going to test randomly near the middle. Maybe two. Six and my final test one ten. Doing the average, it came out to ninety six. That's a difference of two hundred and sixty eight grams from the very first test. I'd say uh, mission accomplished as far as getting this knife sharp again. The polish took really nice, though it's not quite as bright as I was hoping it would be but I didn't spend a whole ton of time on those stones a knife like this you want to try to conserve as much steel as possible 1095 really does go fast and this isn't my knife I think it turned out rather well the edge bevels are the same size it thins out right in here but I think that is the blade grind. It's got nothing to do with the uh, angles that I was holding. Well, Dom, your knife is ready to go. I will get this in the mail after the holiday and get it back to you just as soon as possible. I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to oil it up. There's going to be a line right here just behind the edge where the tape was located that will go away with handling, use, and time. So don't be alarmed by that. It's just where the tape sucked all the oil out of the knife. And as you use it, that will go back to normal. Guys, I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them below. Y'all have a good one.